Shalom, he rose and she bruised. Oh, field disciple. Let's look at a word together um, that I've heard many times before. I um, mean, it's come up again today. And so I wanted to, to hit on this. This is, um, what's wrong with me? I don't hear God. I don't feel God. I don't see God. I don't, I don't feel spiritual. Um, my armor is, is, I feel stripped of all my armor, my spiritual armor. Uh, what have I done wrong? Is something wrong with me? So on and so forth. Um, and I'm sure all of us has felt that at some time and point. Um, and if not, you will. And I guarantee it, you will feel like, wait a minute, where's God? And so, um, the, the first basic thing that we have to, to get in our hearts and get in our mind. And I mean, without, without fail is to know that this word is 100% infallible, true word of God, that even though I'm reading it in the English translation, um, it hasn't lost anything. Now, that requires us to go do word studies and make sure that we're getting these English words correctly. And I've got teachings on that. You can go look at that. Um, but anyway, so let's look at um, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 real quick here. And then I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll, we'll speak on this a minute. Um, and maybe this will help someone out there who may be struggling with that. You know, I know when I, whenever... I bring a message to the congregation sometimes. I, it'll put me up on a spiritual high, like, man, I'm ready to go and, and save and conquer the world. And then by that night, I can't hardly get out of bed. Literally, I'm, I just, I feel physically drained sometimes. And so, you know, and, and it's even been so bad where like the next morning I'll get up and I'll be like, where's God? I don't feel that. And, and so, as, as this has went on over the past, you know, since I've been teaching and, and pastoring, um, having those highs, the spiritual highs, and then the spiritual lows, I've realized that if, if, if the spirit kept me up here this high um, all the time, man, I'd be like, it'd be like revving your engine up to, to the red line and holding it there, it can blow. And so the spirit has, he can bring us up, but he has to let us come back down. And when we come back down, that's when we feel that, um, that loss of the spirit. And so we just have to understand and remember one thing. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Um, I will be with you always until the end. There's several scriptures um, that confirm that. When we read the scriptures, we have to understand that this is a reliable source of documents written by eyewitnesses in the lifetime of other eyewitnesses for the New Testament. Um, and even the Old Testament. And so, and, and when you look at the Old Testament, the amount of writings that have been found that date hundreds of years apart, um, thousands of miles apart from one another, they coincide with one another without fail. Um, there's more documents on scripture that has been found um, than any other writings put together. And so when we start to begin to, to realize this, that, that although I read the King James or I'm reading the scriptures or um, I don't really like it, um, but I'm not going to tell people not to read it. The NIV, um, I don't care for it, but if that's what the, the Spirit leads you, um, I'm not going to tell you not to read that one. Um, I it would be good for you and you would feel more power out of the word if you could get up, work yourself into the King James um, at least um, ESV is not bad it's still it's got some the wording I don't really jive with but anyway all of those translations all stem back and, and come from the Greek Septuagint is where they're translated from it's not like the King James um, 1611 um, translated they translated the the King James from the King James 1611 um, no they went back to the Septuagint they didn't they didn't um, translate the NIV from the King James they went back to the Greek Septuagint um, they just used different words um, the words that we understand in this culture today and so make no mistake these 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 writings that we have today in English or, or French or whatever whatever language we have today that we speak fluently in the translation of Bible we read is not 
a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation. No, it's, it's, it goes back to the Greek Septuagint. And so, in the Greek Septuagint came from Alexander. Um, and Alexander wanted the Hebrew book in his library. He was a very um, passionate man about history and, and warfare. And, and, and so he wanted it. He wanted the Hebrew Bible translated from Hebrew to Greek. And that's where we get the Greek Septuagint. Yeah. It would take me a long time to, to go through all that. So go check me out. I mean, you're welcome to do so. <clears throat> Let's read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. For the rest, my brothers, be strong in the master and in the mightiness of his strength. His right hand, his, his strength is, is his ever-loving glory and holiness. Put on the complete armor of Elohim, for you have the power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, take up the whole armor of Elohim, so that you have the power to withstand in the wicked day, and having done all, to stand. All right, so how do we take up, what, how do we take up this, this spiritual armor? Well, let's check it out. Very first one. Stand then, right? Stand firm. Not backing down. Stand then, having girded your waist with truth. Your waist is where your guts are. Your, your That gut feeling you get, that, that, that understanding. Gird your waist with truth. Truth. That this word is true. And, and it's not going to lie to you. It's not going to let you down. Your emotions, your intellect, your, your feelings... Um, all that will let you down. I guarantee it. This word will never never fail you, never let you down. But it will not help you if you haven't got it in your psyche that this word is 100% true. And it's, it, it, is, it comes straight from um, um, straight from God, um, Elohim, um, inspiration of God to men. Um, yes, it's written by men and men are infallible. I get all that, okay? Okay. Um, but God's not, and God doesn't fail. So you've got to get in your psyche that you have to gird the truth, gird your waist with the truth. The truth is the word. We'll get there. And having put on the bre breastplate of righteousness, well, the breastplate of righteousness is is what protects all of our our, our organs and and our upper torso. Well, if we put on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness is. Righteousness is walking blamelessly um, in the ways of the Lord. Luke 1 6. Um, transgression of the law, um, 1 John 3 4. The law is Torah. And so, walking in righteousness, we don't. Well, let, me, let me re correct that. When we're walking in righteousness, it doesn't mean that we are. Are never sinning, and it doesn't mean that we're we're never failing or falling. Walking in righteousness, and we all can. We got to get that. Don't listen to the pastors that says nobody can be righteous. We can walk in righteousness, walking in the ways of the Lord. That when we read this word and it tells us to do something, and we go and we cross check it, and we and we let the scripture interpret scripture and, and keep it in context, and it says, hey, and God says, stop doing this or start doing this. You got to teshuva, turn, and do what the word says. That's walking in righteousness. And then continue that walk. And having fitted your feet with the preparation of the gospel. All right. You're girded with truth. You've got your breastplate on. You know, you're protected up top. You're protected because you're walking in righteousness. And now you're going to go out and, and, and walk out. The newness that, that Yeshua is creating in you, that you are becoming more like the Son, Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for those who love him according to his works. <clears throat> um, no, I can't I'm, Hang on. I lost it. Romans. Give me one second. Second part of that, Romans 8, 29, 30. Sorry, y'all, I usually have that one pretty pretty well memorized. 
Okay, verse 29, because those whom he knew beforehand, he ordained beforehand to be conformed to the likeness of his son, for him to be the firstborn among many brothers. That he, he has ordained us to be conformed to the likeness of his son. And so that, that fitting our feet with the preparation of the gospel, um, yeah, it can be preaching and teaching, but it can just go out and be, you know, um, walking in that newness of spirit. Above all, taking up the shield of belief or faith, which you shall have power to quench all burning arrows of the wicked one. All right, Ephesians 2 and 8. I'm saved by grace through faith. Saved by grace through faith. Cyclical. God gives me the grace unmeritedly. Um, my faith is built up by trusting in this word more and more and more. The more I trust this word, the stronger my armor is going to get. And the enemy is going to try to come and and knock you off your horse he's going to come and try to derail you if he can't do it um through your your own lust and sin he'll do it through things that look good feel good smell good he's pretty good uh trust me and so the stronger we can get our armor the stronger we can get our faith when our emotions and our intellect tells us i should do this but the word tells us we need to do this that teshuva that i was talking about earlier that turning and facing the lord repenting of our sin when the word tells us to do something other than our emotions or our intellect, we must go to the word. What does God say? It doesn't matter what Matt says. It doesn't matter what Uncle Bob says, Aunt Jenny, or anybody else that's wise that gives you um, information. What does God say? Okay, that's that's faith that that's building up our armor. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Elohim. Right? That that sword of the spirit, um, which is El or, sorry that sword of the spirit which is the word the word is Yahweh is Yeshua you know in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God John 1 1 Jesus is the word so we take up the power of the spirit which is the Holy Spirit and the sword is the word of Elohim and so I, I, I now have an offensive weapon against the enemy when he says hey that tree looks good yeah, but I was told not to eat that tree, so get out of here, Satan. You know, you know what I mean? The, the, the truth of the word will, will override your intellect as you get stronger and stronger in the word. Verse 18, pray in all times with, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching in all preserve, preserve, perseverance and supplication for all. The set apart ones. Also for me, that a word might be given to me in the opening of my mouth to be bold in making known the secret of the good news, the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds and I might speak boldly as I should speak. <coughs> that verse 20 is key and a lot of people cut off at verse 18. Um, I see it on shirts and bumper stickers all the time, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. No, you got to go on to 20 if you're going to get this understanding um, that I am bold that I might speak boldly because I am an ambassador in bonds I'm, I'm in bondage um, to the Lord Messiah to our Lord Messiah I'm in bonds to him um, I owe him everything uh, he paid my debt so why would I not be in, in bonds a bond servant to him um, as well as a friend and a child all that and so an ambassador what's an ambassador do he goes out and he represents where he comes from to another nation Okay, so we are Israel, um, grafted in, uh, Romans chapter 11. We are Israel. Um, we're no longer Goyim. We're no longer ethnos of the nations. We are Israel. And so we go forth into another nation, um, out in our towns, our communities, and we are an ambassador to Christ. We don't make Christ look bad. Um, we represent Messiah. Back like it says in Romans 8, 29, that we become conformed to the likeness of his son because he ordained it beforehand, before the world ever was. That he ordained me before I was born to go through a walk on this earth and become formed more and more like his son every day. And it's a walk. It's not a... Um... Well, I got it, man. I read my Bible once. I'm good. No, that's not going to cut it, y'all. Um, and so, 
I've been having trouble with this thing kicking off. So if it kicks off, that's the that's the the meat of this word. I push hard as a pastor um, to to study this word diligently and trust this word without fail. That if Jesus says he will send the comforter to us, and he did, I trust that. He sent it to me, he sent it to you, and everyone else that um, is on. Um, that's another teaching. He sent the Holy Spirit as the comforter. He said he would, and I believe it. Okay? He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He said he would, I believe it. He said, I am Yahweh Sabaoth. I change not. Yahweh Sabaoth. I am God of hosts. I never change. Don't let no one lie to you. He didn't change anything when the new covenant came. If he did, that's a liar. Malachi's a liar. And we got to throw Malachi out of the, out of the Bible. Um, so, see what happens whenever we don't understand all the verses? No. Um, and get all twisted up, you know. Uh, remember that we cannot operate solely on our emotions or even our intellect, but we must operate by understanding and having the knowledge of the word of truth. And, and, and in that, the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom as to when, where, and how this word will minister to us at any given moment. And it's okay to have a spiritual low. I have went into a spiritual low for weeks at a time. Um, and it sucks. I know. Because you're thinking, you know, maybe I, you know, maybe I, I misread something and maybe I missed the mark. Maybe I just missed what God had told me and I never was really saved. And maybe I really never have heard God. And, you, you know, your own mind gets to playing games up there before you know it. You're ready to just throw all your Bibles away and, and enjoy the last bit of life you've got here because, you know, that's it. I, I've been there, you know. After preaching a sermon that brought people to their knees. And so, I understand spiritual love. Uh, you know, and as a former drug addict, I totally understand it better than most because I understand what it's like to be completely high on cocaine or methamphetamines and then your dealer go out of town and you can't find none and you have to spend three or four days without that drug and you've got to come back and live in your body and it's not so fun no more and it's it's terrible you know, and you just can't wait you will do just about anything to get that drug well so I understand the spiritual highs and lows but the difference is, is that drug leaves your body completely leaves you and fails you uh, because it was a false high to begin with uh, temporary um, whereas the spirit does not leave you it's just like being in a concert uh, everybody shouting and screaming and your ears get accustomed to that and you walk into somewhere quiet everything seems extremely loud everything is like what you know and you're thinking, man, something wrong with my ears. Well, it's the same thing when the, when the Holy Spirit brings us up on a high, um, and then we go, and then He allows us to come back down to the low where we don't burn our, our flesh up, basically. Uh, that's the same same what I'm talking about. That being back in the real world, it almost feels like it's like, man, I don't want to come back here. And one day when we go to glory, we will wonder why we fought so hard to stay alive here. You know? And it's kind of like Paul said, it would be better that I go and be with the master now, but for your sakes, I'll stick around and teach a little longer. You know, that's why we, that's why we stay here in this in, in this earth, this world, um, that we are not of this world, but we're we're passing through, but we have a purpose that we need to fulfill. Um, that Yahweh also ordained us to, to, to uh, fulfill. Make sense? Trust in the Word. Trust in the Word. Trust in the Word. Trust in the Word. And when you're done trusting in the Word, trust in the Word. 
it will not fail you it is not a stepped on translation after translation of translations of translations it is god um, isaiah 55 8 through 12 god says that um, my ways are not his ways my thoughts are not his thoughts but his word will go forth and do what i seen it to do and it will not return unto him void the word is not did not return unto him void he sent the word what's the word Yeshua Yeshua did not die in vain on that cross if you believe he went to the cross and you believe he died spent three days in the grave and rose again and then went to the father if you believe that you believe the rest of what he said because if you can believe that, that's pretty outlandish because he should never have been to be, begin with because he was born from a virgin. So if you can believe that, the rest of it should be pretty easy to believe. Because I mean, come on. You want me to believe that this guy here was born from a woman that never knew a man. Just out of thin air, he began growing in her stomach. He popped out started teaching the Pharisees of Pharisees at a very young age started his ministry and went across the, the land angering everybody because the truth seems to break through your ears and then they crucify the dude he dies three days later he's walking around talking to him it's all good y'all and then he leaves and goes to the right hand of the cross. if you can believe that there's nothing else in this Bible written that is that outlandish. Steven Spielberg, Robert Zemeckis, all of those could get together and they could not write this script. If they tried, there would be fall fallibilities in there. There would be failures in their script. But this book, 66 books compiled together. I promise you it's true. I cannot refute it. Anybody that does use lame excuses and pseudoscience and false narratives to prove their point. They have nothing concrete or substantial to stand on when it comes to trying to refute the validity of the Bible. So, again, trust in the word. Trust in the word. You can't trust in the word. Romans 10, 17, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. What does Jesus tell Satan? Man cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of Yahweh. Every word. I mean, Genesis 1, all the way to Revelation. Every word. Is the word which will sustain us everything else is temporary and we have to look at it that way that there are temporary things and there are eternal things everything of the spirit and god is eternal everything else is temporary our emotions uh, our intellect our thoughts our motives our morals those are all temporary because we're, we're flesh and we're sinful and all of that must go away the incorruptible cannot enter into the kingdom but it must be changed or the corruptible cannot enter into the kingdom but it must be changed to the incorruptible who's going to do that Yeshua at the last trumpet call think about it what I said if you don't get nothing else out of this read your Bible read it until you die Trust me, my wife knows when I haven't read my scriptures for the day. She knows quick, fast, and in a hurry. Just by my mood and my attitude. That means something. I used to be rough. Prior to Christ coming into my life, not me going and begging him into my heart. That's bullshit. Prior to him coming into my life and calling me, I was a pretty good guy. 
but you better not cross me. And I need my beer and my drugs and my whiskey and my women, and I don't care who it pisses off. And so that was grooming me to be the pastor that Yahweh has called. But now I don't care who I piss off when I tell you the truth. And the truth I tell you is not my opinion, my emotions and my intellect. The truth I tell you is the word of Yahweh. I just elaborate a little bit so we can um, have inspiration and, and a desire to go and look it up for yourself. So y'all be blessed. Be encouraged and always be frustrated. Go look this stuff up for yourself. Find me an air. Call me on it. We'll talk about it. Have fun looking. I don't speak until I'm, I'm already uh, done my due diligence on it on my end. So, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not ever wrong. Don't hear me wrong. I, I have had to repent and make videos on here and on Facebook and in my pulpit of I said wrong. Forgive me. This is the correction. I do the same tomorrow, the next day. I do not want to teach wrong. So I'm very diligent about what I speak on. Y'all be blessed. This whole field disciple, and we will catch you on the next